Hi, once again welcome back to Obstetrics and Gynecology videos. Today we are going to see about gestational trophoblastic diseases in that mainly we are discussing about the hydatidiform mole. Gestational trophoblastic disease is a clinical spectrum including all neoplasms derived from abnormal trophoblastic proliferation that is it is occurring due to the abnormal proliferation of the tropoblast and we know that tropoblast is a layer of placenta and initially the placenta is getting developed from the tropoblast the classification of tropoblastic disease include chydatidiform mold or it's otherwise known as vesicular mold and again it is classified into complete and partial mold or it can be an invasive mold or a choriocosinoma or it can be a placental site topoblastic tumor. First, let us see about the vesicular mold. Vesicular mold means it's a benign neoplasm of the coronic villi and it is characterized by the proliferation of the topoblast. That is in the topoblast, both the layers, that is sensitive topoblast and cytotropoblast, both layers will get proliferated. And edema and hydropic degeneration of the connective tissue stroma of the villi, which leads to their distension and formation of vesicles. That is later the villes. We know that for, uh, placenta contains villes. So edema and hydro, hydropic degeneration of the villi will occur, and that leads to the distension and formation of the vesicles. This villi will become vesicles. Later, avascularity of the villi will occur, that is blood supply to the villi will get cut off. The blood vessels disappear from the villi, explaining early death of the embryo. The microscopic appearance of hydatidiform mold, it will show the hyperplasia of the tropoblastic cells and hydropic swelling of the villi also will be there and the blood vessels will be usually absent. The incidence of this is 1 in 2000 pregnancies in United States and in Europe but it is 10 times more in Asia and the predisposing factors include race, deficiency of protein or carotene, the incidence is higher towards the beginning and more towards at the end of the childbearing period and it is 10 times more in women after 45 years. Now we can see the pathology of the vesicular mold. The uterus will get distended by the thin walled translucent grape like vesicles of different size. So that is a peculiar feature of this vesicular mold. Grape like structures will start to grow inside the uterus as like which is shown in this figure. These are degenerated chorionic villi and it is filled with fluid. And there is no blood supply to this chorionic villi and this leads to the death of the fetus or death of the embryo. And again, this vesicular mole is classified into complete mole and partial mole. The complete mole, the whole concept is, is transferred into a mass of vesicles. That is, we won't be having or we won't be able to see the evidences of fetus or embryo. No embryo is present, and it is a result of fertilization of enucleated ovum. That is, ovum won't be having the chromosomes with a sperm which will duplicate, give rise to 46 chromosomes of paternal origin. This picture shows the chromosomal pattern of the complete mole and this is getting fertilized with the sperm and uh, the fertilized embryo will be having 46 XX or which is of paternal origin only. This picture shows the ultrasonographic visualization of the complete mole. Next one is partial mole. A part of trophoblastic tissue only shows the molar changes. That is, we will be able to see the evidences of fetus. The fetus will be there, amniotic sac will be there. And it is a result, a result of fertilization of an ovum by two sperms. So the chromosomal number will be 69. So this picture shows the partial mole. Fetus you can see over here. And the placenta is getting developed into moles. So this picture shows the chromosomal pattern. So the baby will be having 69 triple XY chromosomal pattern will be triple and now we can see the difference between the complete mole and the partial mole 
in the case of complete mole the embryonic or fetal tissue is absent but in the case, case of partial mole it is present and if you are looking into the villi swelling of the villi it will be diffuse and in the case of partial mole it will be focal and if you are looking the feature of tropoplastic hyperplasia in the case of complete mole it is diffuse and in the case of partial mole it is focal and if you are looking into the karyotype the chromosomal pattern is 46 xx that is from the paternal side or 46 xy and in the case of partial mole pet, both paternal and maternal karyotypes will be there and the chromosomal pattern will be 69 xxy and the chance for malignancy is 5 to 10 percentage in the case of complete mole and in the case of partial mole the chance for malignancy is less or oh, it's rare now we can see the diagnosis of vesicular mole first we have to look into the symptoms the symptoms include amenorrhea and it's usually for a period of 2 to 3 months and exaggerated symptoms of pregnancy will be the especially the vomiting and symptoms of pre eclampsia may be present such as headache edema also all those things you can see and the vaginal bleeding will be there and this will be the main complaint and it is due to the separation of the vesicles from the uterine wall and there may be blood stain water discharges the watery parts is from the ruptured vesicles that is when the vesicles are getting separated ruptured it will come along with the blood and when the vesicle if the vesicles are rupturing actually fluid filled vesicles when it is rupturing the fluid also will come out of the uterus and prune juice discharge may occur that is brown color reddish bloodish discharge will occur from the uterus and it is due to the retention of the blood inside the uterine cavity for some time and you can see the passage of vesicles through the from the uterus and this is also a feature that will help for diagnosing the condition the blood may be concealed causing the enlargement and tenderness of the uterus and the other symptoms include abdominal pain it may be a dull aching pain due to the rapid distension of the uterus by the mole or by concealed hemorrhage and sometimes the lady may get a colicky pain due to the starting of expulsion and sometimes they will get sudden severe pain and if it is occurring it is due to the perforating type of mole and if the lady is getting ovarian pain it is due to the stretching of the ovarian capsule or it's a complicate it may be a complication of polycystic ovarian uh, or maybe due to the torsion of the ovary now we can see the signs of vesicular mole in the general examination you can see the signs of preeclampsia in 20 to 30 percentage of the cases the preeclampsia that is edema proteinuria all those things will develop before the 20th week of gestation and lady will be having pallor and it shows the or it is a significant sign of anemia and majority will be having the hyperthyroidism that is 3 to 10 in 3 to 10 percentage of the cases it will be manifested by enlarged thyroid gland and tachycardia and this hypothyroid hyperthyroidism is occurring due to the chorionic thyrotropin secreted by the tropoblast and hcg also is also having a thyroid stimulating effect and usual signs of breast signs also will be there that is montgomery tubercles will develop enlargement of the breast will be there bluish discoloration bluish surface veins will be visible prickling and tingling sensation of the breast all those usual signs also will be there and if you are looking into the uterus the size of the uterus sometimes it may be more than the period of amenorrhea that is in 50 percentage of the cases it will be more than the period of amenorrhea and in 25 percentage of the cases it corresponds to the gestational age and in another 25 percentage it may be smaller than the gestational age and this you can see in the case of inactive or dead mole and the uterus will be duffy in consistency due to the absence of amniotic fluid and its distension with the vesicles the fetal heart sounds and fetal parts cannot be detected especially in the case of uh, partial or complete mole and in partial mole sometimes it may be possible for you to detect it
in the local examination you can examine the vagina and you may be able to see the passage of vesicles and if it is there it's a sure sign of vesicular mole and bilateral ovarian cyst you can see in the case of 50 percentage of the cases and internal no internal ballotment you won't be able to do the internal ballotment and the investigations include you can perform the urine pregnancy test and it will be pos positive even in higher dilution also and 1 by 200 is highly suggestive and if it is 1 by 500 it is surely diagnostic and in normal pregnancy it is positive in dilutions up to 1 by 100 only even in that high dilution if it is present if it is positive it shows the chance of hard added for mold vesicular mold and serum b hcg level you can see and it will be elevated it will be more than 1 lakh milli unit per ml and ultrasonography reveals the characteristics of intrauterine um, or it shows the features of intrauterine vesicles presence of intrauterine vesicles that is no storm appearance will be there and no fetus won't be identifiable a bilateral ovarian cyst if it is there that also can be detected and if you are performing the x-ray skeleton you won't be able to see the fetal skeletal shadow and if you are taking the x-ray of the chest it should be performed in every cases of tropoblastic tumor And in the case of partial mold, complex mold with many cystic areas and an embryo in a patient with a beta HCG of 28,000 milli units per ml, you can see. And in the case of complete mold, you can see the snowstorm appearance with the multiple cystic areas and no fetal tissues will be present. And corresponding to the T1 weighed MRI, MRI can be helpful in determining the extent of tropoblastic diseases. The real-time ultrasound of the hydatidiform mold shows the dark circles of varying sizes at the top center and the edematous villi also will be seen there. The complications include hemorrhage, chance for infection is there and it is due to the absence of amniotic fluid and if you are evacuating the vesicular mold a large surface area of the uh, area will be there over the uterus due to the expulsion or evacuation of the mold so these two things may lead to the or uh, these two things are giving high risk for getting infection and there is a chance for perforation of the uterus sometimes without any external inference also perforation may occur and sometimes when you are performing the evacuation of the moles, there is a chance for perforation of the uterus. And chance for pregnancy induced hypertension is there. Chance for hyperthyroidism is there. And later this moles, especially the complete mole, it may become a choriocarcinoma. And there is a chance for recurrence in the subsequent pregnancies. And this chance is about 1 to 2 percentage. And the treatment include... Mainly we can go for the suction, dilatation and curettage in order to remove the benign hydatidiform mold. Because immediately after the diagnosis you have to evacuate it. Otherwise there is a chance for getting complications. And an oxytocic agent that is 20 units of oxytocin in 500 ml of 5% of glucose should be infused as IV after starting the evacuation and it should be continued for several hours in order to enhance the uterine curettage and in order to enhance the proper contraction of the uterus. And in the case of suction evacuation, first you have to dilate the cervix and for dilating the cervix you can use a Hegas dilator and the size of the Hegas dilator that we are using corresponds to the period of amnoria. And in the case of after dilating, you have to insert the section cannula and the size of the section cannula also corresponds to the uh, period of amenorrhea. The section cannula may be a metal or a disposable plastic one. It should be introduced into the uterine cavity. The cannula is connected to a section pump adjusted to a negative pressure of 300 to 500 millimeter of mercury according to the duration of the pregnancy. And the vesicles has to be removed by aspirating it and after removal it should be sent for histological examination in order to exclude the possibility of malignancy or you have to test for the malignancy. 
Next one is curettage. After the evacuation, the uterus is gently curated with a sharp curette. Some advise curettage after one week evacuation in order to ensure the complete removal. But this is not a routine practice actually. Next one is hysterotomy. It may be needed for evacuation of large mold in order to minimize and to facilitate the control of bleeding. We can make an opening in the uterus and we can remove the molds or contents through that opening. Next one is hysterectomy and it should be considered in a woman after 40 years who have completed their family of family because we know that there is a chance for getting chorea carcinoma. So in order to avoid the fear of chorea carcinoma or in order to exclude that possibility if you want if the family is completed you can go for the hysterectomy that is the removal of the uterus. And next is medical injection. Oxytocin and prostaglandin may be used to encourage the expulsion of the mold but must always it should be followed by the surgical evacuation. And the follow up, there is a chance for chorea carcinoma and it may complicate the vesicular mold after the evacuation. So we have to see the serum beta HCG by radio amida assay. Normally the subunit, beta subunits reach normal between 8 to 12 weeks after the evacuation. And the HCG should be measured, beta HCG should be measured. Uh, for that you should do the radio amino assay every week till the test become negative. And once if it become negative for the 3 successive weeks, then test should be repeated every month for 1 year. And the pregnancy is allowed if the test remains negative for one year. And if persistent high levels of HCG is there, it indicates a remnants of molar tissue or uh, sometimes even you can suspect the chorea carcinoma. And in that case, you, you should go for the chemotherapy or you, you can start it with the methotrexate. Otherwise, you can go for the hysterectomy if the child number of children or if her family is completed and rising levels of HCG after disappearance it shows the chorea carcinoma and it is expected that the urine pregnancy test is negative for four weeks after the evacuation and the serum beta HCG is undetectable for four months after the evacuation so after four weeks it will be it won't be there in the urine and after four months it won't be detectable even in the blood also and contraception during the for, for follow up period the combined pill can be started once if the hcg level become negative and till that we can advise the woman to use the condom if the pills is used earlier the beta hcg will take longer time to become negative as estrogen stimulates the growth of topoblast so until the hcg level is coming down the ladies are the woman is not supposed to use the contraceptive pills especially the combined pills and next is intrauterine devices the intrauterine devices we are not using because it may lead to irregular uterine bleeding and you may get confused it with the presence of vesicular molds. So these are the main things about the treatment, signs and symptoms of hydrated for more. So thank you for watching this video. See you soon with a new video. Bye.